Hey there, it's Brittany Chavers and I'm back with a tutorial today using the new ice cream mini bead mixes from Jesse Jane Speeds. Um, my favorite one, I think out of all nine, is cookie dough. Um, it's a fantastic flavor of ice cream, but it's a really fun mix. And um, it kind of, it, it incorporates neutrals instead of just pastels. The pastel um, Mixes are really cute, but I really like the, the metals and the different stones and crystals in here. And then it has a really good complement in root beer float. So I think we're gonna make a necklace today. I have a loose idea of what I wanna make, but I'm not too sure. And um, I'm thinking we can incorporate one or two different strands of the Trailblazer collection. Um, we have Ash, which really goes well with the root beer collection. And then we have Redwoods, which goes really, really well with the um, cookie dough collection. So the one that I really, uh, that really caught my eye together was the root beer, even though I really love um, the cookie dough the most. We're gonna try and work that in a little bit later. We might make a bracelet with that, not 100% sure. But the necklace I kind of thought of incorporated ash and, um, uh, root beer. So I'm going to try and back out a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. And uh, I'm going to spill out my root beer float. And I think over to the side I'm going to spill out, just so I don't mix, just so I don't mix them together, um, the cookie dough. It's making me hungry. <laughs> but we'll spill this out over here. They're very complementary of each other. They have similar colors. Um, and then we'll keep our redwoods and ash um, near our, our pieces. So I think today we're gonna use some Beetle-On bead stringing wire and we're gonna make um, a strung necklace. I have this 19 strand gold. And uh, so I'm thinking I wanna do a double strand necklace. Oh, and I also have these two um, seed bead mixes in Toho, uh, Toho Elevenos in Vintage Vibes and Antique Lace. So again, more neutrals to work in with our, t our four different collections here. So um, I'm going to do, I think, like I said, a double strand necklace, but um, we have two different colors of metal. So Root Beer Float has a lot of silver, and then um, Cookie Dough has gold and copper. I think I'm gonna lean towards a little bit more the gold and copper and um, work in that direction, especially since we're using gold um, wire. But I want my connection point to be our cage bead. I've never used a cage bead, <laughs> but I think we're gonna start today. Um, so I want my connection point for at least um, one part of the necklace to be our cage beads. So I'm just gonna set those there for now. And then I'm gonna look through my mix and uh, kind of see what I like. Um, we are gonna have multi uh, metals in here, mixed metals, because each strand also has mixed metals. So this has antique brass and some silver heishis. And then redwood has copper and antique brass. So um, by Starting off with knowing we're gonna have mixed metals, it's gonna be make it's gonna make our job a little bit easier. So um, I'm gonna pick out of the mix the beads that I absolutely want to incorporate, and we're gonna set these aside for now because the they those aren't gonna be the focal. So the beads that I'm seeing right off the bat that I need to incorporate are these lovely matte crystals. They're a nice brown gray. Um, these uh, frosted glass beads. And then we have some almost like mermaid glass beads. They have a flash in them. And I'm just picking them out so I can go back to them pretty easily when we start our pattern. And then I like these. These are actually acrylic, but they look um, almost like a gemstone or a wood with, that, uh, with the stripes in them. So I'm gonna set those to the side as well. I really like this green glass, but I don't know if we're gonna make it into the necklace with it because of the shape, but we'll, I'll set that to the side just for a moment. 
and these are pretty interesting. Normally with this shape, shape bead, you would expect the, um, sh the hole to go up and down like that, but it's going like this. So we definitely want to incorporate those into our necklace. And then um, I'm gonna go, come over here to our Cookie Monster, or not Cookie Monster mix, to our Cookie Dough mix. There is a Cookie Monster mix though, and I'm gonna pull out some beads from that mix. So I'm really loving these either Magnesite or Howlite beads. Um, I'm seeing a couple pearls that are really nice. Um, more Howlite. And I like these crystals as well. And I, mm, I'm not sure if I want to get something that sparkly in there, especially if we have these guys, but I'm going to put them to the side for just a moment. And I definitely want to get some of this copper. We have some copper um, crystal rondelle spacers. And we have two, or f I should say four um, copper bead caps that we're going to work into the necklace as well. I'm still going to leave all of these beads off to the side in case I decide to come back for maybe some of these um, gold stardust spacers and possibly some of these matte black beads. I really like those. I'm going to push these off to the side and there are some that I'm considering these um, gray luster beads look really cute and again maybe some of these um, rectangle beads. So now I'm going to decide on how I would like my my necklace to look. Um, I want a double strand. So one is gonna have to hang lower than the other, but I want to figure out what beads we're gonna be using in each strand of the necklace. So I'm thinking the larger beads will be on the outer outside strand to anchor it. Draw your eye down. Liking these for the inside strand. And actually, I think we can work in a couple of these crystals. We'll use some head pins to make those into to dangles. And actually, we'll move those towards the middle a little bit. And since I really wanted to work these green beads in, we'll move the smaller greens uh, towards the outside. Um, we're going to need a focal bead here, and I found um, a focal from one of the Pantone bead strands and two bead caps, so I think that goes really well in the center there. It's going gonna, it's gonna to look nice <laughs> in just a moment. And then I'm going to put two of these highlight beads right next to that focal. And then I'm going to work them in the rest of this strand. Okay. 
Now this this part of the necklace is pretty shiny with a lot of crystal, so we want to make sure that's anchored by some crystal up here. If there isn't enough up here, it's just gonna they're not gonna look cohesive. We also want to use some of the same beads that we're using, or at least same colors that is in this strand up here. So we're bringing this um, taupe brown in by using the miracle or mermaid beads. Um, I want to bring in some of the uh, how light by using my last two beads in here. I want to bring in some sparkle by putting in our peach beads or ivory beads and then I think I will bring a little bit of glitz right here I don't know that these are going to m work with our design today, um, so I'll try and find a different bead that w we can t uh, that can take their place. Um, we're gonna put these in. And I want to pepper in some of my copper to bring a little bit more sparkle in there. Two. So I'm looking for a bead that won't take away from this large bead in the middle, but will sit really nicely in the middle there. Not copper. I think that would look really nice there. Or we can just put a rondelle, or I'm sorry, a crystal spacer on either side of this. And that guy can be in the middle. I'm going to take these two and move them somewhere else in the necklace. Okay. All right, so we have two shorter strands. 
Mm, let's see, I don't think I worked in my copper bead caps, but we have a lot of copper going on with our spacers. I want to make sure I have a couple of these on the ends. Okay, so we have our first part of our necklace, which will be the two, um, the two strands that will cook, hook, cook, that will hook onto our um, cage beads, and then we will work on the the back of the necklace in just a moment. Um, I was going to use some seed beads to create a loop onto our cage bead. I'm just trying to decide which color I want to use. I'm thinking we're going to go with this really the darkest cream. And I'm just going to get out the top of my bead cup here. And I'm just gonna start. So I have a pre-cut length of wire and it's not very long. It's Well, it actually is pretty long, but we're not gonna use all of it. And uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is grab some seed beads and load them onto my wire. And I've done this technique to make a bracelet before, um, actually make a, a closure on a bracelet before, and I don't think I did it for, well I used Jesse James beads buttons, or dress it up buttons, but I don't, didn't do it for their channel. Um, however, the same principle applies. We can just use it as a loop instead of crimping right onto the cage bead, we can use this as our attachment. Now, crimping right onto the cage bead is totally fine. You, you can absolutely do that. And what I should have done was start with a crimp bead, which I have somewhere here. And I'm going to flat crimp this crimp bead to make it a little bit easier on myself. But um, we want to put it, I'm going to put it on the other end first. few more of these. And then I'm going to put it through our cage bead. And then I'm going to put it down back, back down through our crimp bead. Move that up a little bit. Again, you don't have to put it through the cage bead. And if you don't, if you're not comfortable doing this, you can just use um, a uh, jump ring. Or you can just crimp right onto the cage bead. I'm going to find my crimping pliers. So we see we have it through our cage bead. I'm going to tighten that as much as possible so we don't have any gaps. And we want to make sure that our wires aren't crossed. I'm going to bring that down.
and flat current. So there we go. There's our attachment onto our crimp bead. Isn't that cool? Or onto our cage bead. So that is one strand. Now that I'm looking at it, it's probably not going to work for both strands, <laughs> but we'll figure it out when we get there. So I am going to go ahead and grab some head pins and I'm going to make some charms out of our teardrop beads. I'm just going to do that by creating a super, a super, a simple loop, making sure that my head, bead, head pin is large enough to not go through the bead. And I'm going to go ahead and do that for every single one of my teardrop beads. Okay, I also went ahead and put a jump ring on each one of our drops. Like that. Now I'm going to string our longer section of the necklace. And I'm just going to start with these crystal rondelles and come down our line here. And then now that we're at the midpoint, we'll just come back up the other side. Okay, so our first piece is strung. I am just going to trim our wires. I'm gonna get there in there as closely as possible without trimming your main wire. And we'll come into this one. There we go. And that's just a really pretty focal for just a one strand necklace. We could just leave it like that if we really wanted to. Um, I'm going to still go. I had a vision. I love um, the thought process that I had for the um, two strand necklace. But what I'm thinking, I'm trying to decide how we'll attach the second strand, whether it will be, it's going to be kind of hard to do it again like that. But I'm going to go ahead and um, string our second strand just to uh, make sure we don't mess up the design any further.
Okay, so I went into my stash and I got two more cage beads and I did the second strand exactly like I did the first, okay? Um, and I ended up adding some crimp covers to the, uh, to the strand because there was a little bit of gap showing and that's a great way to eat up some space on your, your necklace if the, the crimp didn't go as well as planned or if there's just some extra space. So I'm going to connect this, this cage bead to this cage bead by using a jump ring. We want to make sure that it's going to lay correctly. So um, I want to grab it right here. And where's the top that I'd like this one to be? Right there. And we're going to connect those two together. Being very careful that they don't come apart. Okay, there we go. There we go. And we're just going to do the exact same thing on the other side of the necklace. And if you want them to be a little bit further apart than that, which I'm fine, use a bigger jump ring, or you can um, put another bead in the middle as a bridge, whatever floats your boat. And I'm just gonna look for the top of this one. There we go. And where I'd like this one to hook on is right there. Okay, so here is our first part of our necklace. It's taken us a while, but I think it's super cute and I haven't done anything like this before. So what we're going to do next is connect um, the back of the necklace to the front of the necklace. So. Get that a little straightened out. There we go. Get that straightened out. Um, for the back of the necklace, I want to use these strands, but we're going to liven them up a little bit by adding some crystals and some pieces, a couple pieces from the Redwoods collection. So I'll open that up. I'm just going to do one side at a time. Uh, let's see. And um, we'll put
Okay, so I'm going to grab my bead stringing wire. And I'm just gonna string this really quickly. Okay, so I've put a jump ring at the top of each one of my top um, cage beads, and I am just going to string directly onto that jump ring, making sure that it's completely closed because we don't want to have any issues. I'm going to go right back down through my crimp bead. And then through a couple of these beads. And you can folded crimp here or flat crimp, whatever's easier, since these are um, pretty hard to see with all that's going on with this. Um, necklace. I'm just going to flat crimp. You can cover them with crimp beads like I did on the second strand too, or crimp covers I should say. And then ju you just want to make sure that your wires aren't crossed when you flat crimp. Go like that. And then I will do the exact same thing on the other side. Then I'm going to crimp the other side to um, a clasp. And you can use a jump ring. Oh, my didn't put a crimp bead on there. You can use a jump ring instead of crimping around on, right onto the clasp, which actually now that I'm thinking about it, I'm going to do in case I, later on I decide I want to add um, an extender or um, a different clasp. It'll be easier to change out if this is onto a jump ring and not the clasp itself. And then I'll use another jump ring to hook the uh, clasp to the strand. That way I don't have to open this jump ring that's perfectly closed and we won't have an issue with our jump ring, um, our string, stringing wire uh, coming through our jump ring. And I'm going to take some pliers and hang on to my jump ring with them. And I'm going to pull. The, it, this can be loosey goosey, but it's not. It, this part is not as important at, at keeping shape as this part. Um, we don't want it to be super tight to where uh, it won't bend, though. So we're just going to keep it like that. I'm going to go ahead and flat crimp. And I am going to trim my wires. So there's the back of our necklace, and I'll show you what everything looks like um, in just a minute. I know it can get a little confusing looking at it like this, but it's coming together. It's coming together. I'm going to bead the other side, and then we'll show the finished product. Okay, I think we nailed it. <laughs> this is uh, this was a fun necklace for me to create, and it got me out of my comfort zone by trying a different attachment than I normally do. And I got to use some cage beads, which I, I hadn't thought of a use of outside of earrings before. So um, here, let me pull this up for you to see. We have our beautiful double strand necklace. I did try it on and it was, it was the perfect length. And let's get this stuff out of here. We had, we used four different bead collections. We used um, ash, um, redwood, 
the trail uh, red woods for the trailblazer collections and then we used root beer and um cookie dough for the ice cream collections to come up with a really fun neutral necklace with some with some bling and a couple different kinds of connections i like it i like it let me know what you think <laughs> thanks so much for watching thanks to jesse james beads as always for having me i'm going to see if it looks better on a different background here you can see more of my tutorials on um, turquoise.street on YouTube or in my uh, bead group uh, at Brittany's Beads on Facebook. Thank you so much for watching. I had so much fun. I had a blast putting this together and I hope you liked it. Stay tuned for some pictures of it and uh, have a good day. Bye-bye.